In this video, we're going to look at some critiques that Ice Cube has received after going on the Tucker Carlson show on Twitter. We're talking about Jamel Hill, Erica Alexander, and of course, D.L. Hughley. I'm going to give my critique about the criticism as well as I'm going to turn it over to you to get your thoughts about it. And at the end, we're going to get some strong words of advice for anybody else tackling this issue of freedom of speech. D.L. Hughley posted this comment on Instagram with a, with a picture of Ice Cube and Tucker Carlson in a vehicle. And he said, when has Tucker Carlson ever been credible? When has he ever shown a genuine concern for anyone that looks like us? And then the next day, he made another comment and he says, stupid. One word, stupid. So then a number of people chimed in, including Jamel Hill, Erica Alexandra from Living Single, and they went on and on about Ice Cube, about how bad a look this was for him. Jamel Hill quoted a number of reasons why Tucker Carlson's a bad look for anyone, of uh, anybody black and conscious to go on his, on his application or his program. Let me also say, D.L. Hughley, Erica Alexander, Jamel Hill are not the only people that have been critical of Ice Cube going to talk with Tucker Carlson. A lot of black-owned media outlets have been doing the same thing, but a lot of those media outlets basically got to rock, rock with the Democratic Party or they don't exist anymore. Like, come on, man, that's what they kind of get their bread and butter from. They do the bidding of the Democrats, which brings me to my larger point is this. You know, I'm not a preacher, but I remember in a Bible verse that went something like, in Matthew, somewhere that says, judge not lest ye be judged. Judge not lest ye be, ju ye be judged. Like, if you're judging others, remember, people can judge you. Like, we can judge you, um, D.L. Hughley, for going on CNN. You think the majority of the black community is so favorable of CNN? I mean, people that are under 50. You think they're so favorable of CNN? You think that they see that CNN is this bastion of of outwork or of, of support for the black community? Or do we see them as another corporate leg of the Democratic Party basically feeding us hollow talking points in order to keep us in line and keep us voting for the Democrats? That's how I think I see them. And you think everyone was so cool when you went and sat down with Megyn Kelly? We weren't. We were like, what was D.L. Hughley doing sitting down with Megyn Kelly? For half of it, you seemed sort of like you were unprepared. The other half, you just got boisterous and loud. But were you really scoring points? Were you really scoring points? Does that benefit black people that you went on Megyn Kelly's show on Fox and talked to her? So anybody could criticize you for, for your actions. You think that we all supported you having a show on CNN? I mean, it was a great boost up for you. It was a great come up for you. But how effective was it, what, was it for black people in general? And of course, it's, you know, it's great, man. You've been done a great things in your, in your career. No one can take that from you, the way you are transcended and ascended from being a comedian to being a writer to being an author to being a, 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 a commentator, from being a political analyst. All those things, having a hit radio show, all those things are fantastic. No one can take that from you. But Ice Cube is a black man who's, who's standing up for the issues that he cares about, and he should be able to do that wherever he wants to do it without getting criticism from you about where he goes. When you go similar places and you've been with other people, you've been with Don Lemon, the same guy who was taking on Bill O'Reilly talking points, telling black people they need to pull their pants up and stop having kids and clean up their pickup trash as if that is going to somehow propel us to having more than 2% of the wealth in this country when other issues really are the issues that are keeping black people underclass in America. But I didn't see you stop going on CNN. I didn't see you call out Don Lemon when you had an opportunity. No, you were quiet. See, we could go back and forth and we could start pointing out things. Jamel Hill's not absence of criticism. I got some for you, Jamel Hill. If you weren't talking about black men and, and playing up this black feminist role, would you be doing what you're doing? If you, would, you, would you have the same amplification in the platform that you have if you weren't throwing black men under the bus in order to feel your progression? Very rarely do I see you going after black women. You treat black men as black women like they're a separate race when they're not. So we have criticism for you on that, on that way. People can lay that at your doorstep, and what do you say to that? And let's be very clear, man. If it wasn't for you throwing Donald Trump, you know, calling Donald Trump a white supremacist when the liberals wanted you to, we wouldn't even be talking to you. You wouldn't even have a network option on the on the on the table with Spotify if it weren't for that. You like put enough tokens in the bank with the white liberals for you to be amplified 
to give yourself a Spotify network. And what did you do? You used that to propel you and to put your sisters on, put a number of black women in position so they can amplify themselves and grow. I'm not taking that from you. You're a sports journalist who has transcended, who has made um, a much progress, who has shown yourself to be on the world stage and to be a real, time, a real player in the game of journalism from being paid in the sports arena to go on to be a political analyst and a communicator and you sit down with the likes of all types of folks to talk about a wide range of issues. But what I'm saying is criticism is there for everybody. Even Erica Alexander, who is very gracious and very dignified in your speech system, but what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you trying to say? Q can't sit down and talk to Tucker about some shit that's on him that's about his business? And I'm not defending Q, look, I would have said some things different than Cube, but for the last 10 years, I've had the benefit of knowing what the hell I'm talking about when it comes to a number of issues like police brutality, like discrimination. And I would have pushed back on Tucker Carlson when he was like talking about racism as if that's only white women occurrence outside Walmart telling black people they can't use the water fountain or telling black fishermen to go sit down or, or get off their private property. I would have been talking about systemic racism, but I have that acumen. I have that credibility and I've done the work to be able to have that conversation. But that doesn't mean Ice Cube can't talk his shit. That doesn't mean he can't have his own conversations about issues he cares about. See, we, when we start talking about we got to stay in our silos and people can't communicate, how does that benefit black people? Black people cannot stay siloed off from the rest of the world and hide behind Joe Biden. We ain't going to be able to hide behind Nancy Pelosi. We got to deal with Republicans and Democrats and be able to go into their arenas and say our shit and speak our minds in order to influence the masses. And we're the only group of people that are in this predicament where we are so, you know, unable to, to travel and venture off the plantation, so to speak. No one criticizes white people for going on Fox. No one criticizes Latinos. No one criticizes Asians. No one criticizes Native Americans for talking on MSNBC or CNN and then going to Fox or going to RT or going to some other platforms. And if they do, it's not to the same extent as black people where we not only not only do the other people, not only do white folks come for us, but we come for ourselves, police ourselves from not having conversations that I think are vital I mean, when we're sitting back and we're at the bottom of everything good and at the top of everything bad in any category, any statistical category, where it comes to value of life or quality of life in America, I think we need to stop, we, start to, we need to re-examine what's off limits and what's not off limits. When people are dying and drowning, it's time to take all that off limits shit off the table and say, no, all rules are changed. The rules gotta go out the window, man. Our babies are dying. A woman are dying at three times the rate a white woman when it comes to having children. And you sitting up here talking about who's sitting and talking to Tucker as if Ice Cube gave Tucker a platform. No, Tucker gave Ice Cube a platform. Now, did Ice Cube go on Tucker's platform? And this is the part I want my audience to hear. When Ice Cube went on Tucker Carlson's show, did he say anything radically different than he would say it if he would have came on a Tim Black show or a black any black platform? I don't think he did. I think his criticism of politicians was is longstanding. He's been very vocal about it. Hell, his criticisms of the U.S. government, he's been very consistent with it since death certificate. So what's the problem? You sound like you are echo chamber, a political operative for the Democratic Party, and I wouldn't be, I, I don't think I'm being outlandish or slanderous to say, we tired of that shit. And I just want you to remember that you're part, now we got some new media, we got new black media, and we're not going for them old ass Negro spiritual conversations, them old ass chicken dinners on Sundays during election season with Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and the crew get to run through and say a bunch of platitudes and then bounce and then there be no recourse, there be no holding them accountable for their bullshit. Them days are over. The new generation of black people are being a lot more scrutinizing of these Democrats as well as liberals right along with the conservatives. And we're not going to withhold our criticism of any party. We are partyless. None of the parties are working out for us. We need better dance partners or no dance partners. We need interest. And whoever's going to benefit our interest is who we should rock with. So, 
I'm posing this to the people out there. Folks, we should be able to talk to whoever we want to talk to. A sellout is someone who changes their tune, who starts dancing to a different beat when they get around white folks. But if you're going to go on a white platform and you're going to stand up for black people and speak your shit, then that's not, that's not selling out. Did he get paid to lie about black people? Is he throwing? I've heard people criticizing Ice Cube as if he was Candace Owens. When did Ice Cube throw black people under the bus? Going on Tucker's not throwing black people under the bus. We said Kanye threw black people under the bus because he downplayed the significance and the severity of slavery. Not just because he went on TMZ or Carl, uh, Chuck Tucker Carlson's show, but because of what he said when he got there. And that's the difference. And I don't feel that what Ice Cube said was as offensive or anywhere in that realm as offensive. Some things, of course, I would have done it differently. But like I stated, I've been doing this for a decade. I've had the benefit of reading numerous texts to support my to support my positions, and maybe Cube hasn't done that. He's been running multiple businesses, not to mention acting in Hollywood, not to mention still dropping albums and going on tours. And now he's got the big three. So I wish that we supported ourselves more, supported each other a little bit more, and criticized each other a little bit less, and stopped jumping out there to benefit or get Scooby Snacks and Corn McMuffins from liberals and the Democrats by criticizing each other. And I think that's the real reason why a lot of people laid these criticisms on Cube, to score points with Democratic parties, the Democratic Party. Now, I, can't, I have no evidence to this effect, but I'm sure feeling it. My spidey senses are tingling that you're putting tokens in the bank with the Democrats for a reason. So we'll be looking at we'll be looking at Erica Alexandria. We'll be looking at Ice Cube. We'll be looking at Jamel Hill to see what's their next project going to be. See, I think nothing happens for free, and I don't think people do deeds, good deeds for free. I think there's a reason why you thought it was important for you to vocalize your disdain for Ice Cube. DL, your disagreement about the jab, your disagreement about Cube having a contract with Black America, and you having timelines for when Black people can challenge the Democrats, that's whack as fuck. No one agrees with you on that. Well, at least the majority of young Black people, the new wave of Black people challenging the establishment and the status quo, do not agree with you. You're out of step. Is that cute? It's out of step. You're out of step. And all that being said, I got no problems with any one of you. I support you. And sometimes, 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 out of love, you ass got to be corrected. And that's all I'm doing. The same thing you did, which is criticize Cube. Well, I'm criticizing you for criticizing him. And I'm telling you, cut the shit. Let's get the checks cut. I'm Tim Black, guys. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be doing my show, Tim Black's Black Table. Be here, there. Of course, my lovely Mrs. Black, my wife, will be here with me. And we're going to talk about a range of issues. And I'd love to get your input. Put your comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to this channel. The Black Table streams Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Times. Subscribe to this Tim Black News channel and you might have 99 problems, but your news ain't one.